Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. Welcome to my shop. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about one of the oldest of all planes, and that's the router plane. It won't do some of the things its newer electric cousin will do, but it'll do a lot of the things that a router will do. The first are what are called grooves and dados. Grooves are U-shaped depression that runs with the grain of the wood, while a dado is the same U-shaped depression that runs across the grain. So in a woodworking shop, if you're cutting a dado, it's across the grain, a groove is with the grain. It will also cut a small rabbit up to about a half inch wide in the edge of a board, but really only does that job well with the grain. This is a classic number 71 Stanley that I bought as what was called new old stock in the 1960s. And it was pretty much brand new in the box, all nickel plated, very nice plane. It came with three cutters, the first being a V shape, just a little less than a half an inch, that is great for leveling a field such as a hinge mortise, which I'll show you in a few minutes. It also came with a half inch wide cutter and a quarter inch wide that's in the plane. Below there is a shoe here that mounts to this post that will close the throat. This is what you call an open throat plane because this allows it to go over and up to an obstruction. It has a post here that the shoe mounts on. Uh, it has a smaller end and a bigger end and you can take the shoe off and put that down just slightly below the work and use it to guide you when cutting dados and grooves freehand. You can also turn it around backwards and mount the cutter here so that you can do bull nose work where you work right up to a edge or an obstruction. This is a modern bench dog version of this classic 71. It comes with a 3 8 cutter. It has a fence that goes on the bottom, the same as this one does. And either of these fences allow you to follow an edge when you're cutting grooves. It also, one edge of it is scallop shape here, and this allows you to follow an edge around a circle like this. And you could actually cut out this whole tray with a router plane, and that was done on tea tables in the late 18th and early 19th century. So now, let me show you how to cut grooves and dados with this plane. If you're cutting both dados across to grooves with the grain, you generally cut the dados before you cut the grooves because in cutting these, you're gonna get breakout at this edge and this edge. And that's why you chisel these edges back a little bit first. We're going to have a hypothetical situation in which we have a groove running here with a stopped dado ending at the groove. And this will show the performance of a router plane well. In preparation for this, I first laid out the groove, both sides of it, and lined up my plane to match that. Then I struck two lines here that are the width of this 3 8 cutter. Now you can cut any dado wider than the blade in the router plane, but of course you can't cut one that's narrower. So we could do anything up to three quarter inch wide dado with this blade pretty easily. 
So starting with the groove, we're going to just place the plane down. The fence is set. I'm going to unlock this and bring this down till it just touches the material. By striking lines where the blade is going to cut, I am eliminating breakout to either side of the line. So I just put the blade down a little more. There. Now if I wanted to stop this groove shy of the end, I would mark it cross grain and then take a chisel and cut a little bit out here, have a little space. And then I'd clamp a board to the bench right here that stopped the whole plane when I got so I didn't break that out. I would be able to work down half the board, then set the fence the other way and come back this way after I turned this around in the vise. So uh, this is an excellent for stop grooves or stop dados. There, a nice generous quarter inch depth. We can put this one aside and we'll now come over and cut our dado. I'm going to get a cross cut back saw out here and I'm going to cut to the waist side of that line. Just walking that line right across. I do not want to touch here. I'm going to come almost to that line. But this allows me to get this job done a little bit quicker here. There, I'm just shy of that line. I've cut to about here. I'll now come in with a chisel, pick up that gauge line. And if you don't have a back saw, you could do this whole job with a chisel. Now we can take our router plane and loosening the lock nut here. I will screw this down until I can feel I'm taking a little bit of a cut and then I'll lock it. I'll carefully guide that right across there. As I mentioned before, to take a small chisel and just cut right down through here like that. And by beveling that edge right there, we can come across and not break out. Now back to our router plane. Now it's time to cheap deepen our chisel marks a little bit. All right, we'll give it one more cut here and should have this done. And there we have our finished dado leading up to the groove. It stopped. We have not broken out any of these corners here. 
everything's hunky-dory we could put a panel in here and then have a shelf going up to that panel a little bit of a variation on the cutting groove routine with a router plane is what are called string inlays and here I have laid out a quarter inch wide trough or groove and I've cut a piece of cherry veneer exactly a quarter inch wide I can now come along here like this and just very carefully and I'm going to take very light cuts now A little bit more. That's hopefully about one twenty-eighth of an inch deep. That's going down in there nicely. Oh, and I'll just put a little bit of super glue in that. Not much. And now I'll put that down there. And that's a press fit side to side. There we go, our string inlay in the edge. They actually sell very, very small router planes. They're only about that big around for this kind of work. All right, here is a case where we want to put a hinge on the surface. And I took a nice brass hinge and I've laid it down where I want it. And I took a bench knife and I cut a line all the way around that. And then I took a chisel and I chiseled first straight down, then at an angle, and broke out the sides. I have now put the triangular blade, that's a triangular point, a little less than a half inch wide. And I'm going to adjust that down till it cuts a little out of there, just like that. And I don't know if you can see this, but I can actually go in and run that sideways and cut wood right out of there. And I'll, much like your plane that you can use down in a river valley like this. You always want to read your green a little bit for these kind of operations. I have the green running a little up this way in this piece, so I'm starting here and planing in that direction. Take a little more out of there. Time to clean up our edges just a little bit. Starting to go under that first cut. further. And I can go right up into the corner with that blade, which essentially is a 45 degree point. Going back to our hinge now. We're starting to look pretty nice here. It actually has to be pounded down into that, or tapped, shall we say, down into that opening. And it sort of stays there by herself, and that's a good job of inletting a hinge.
hinge mortises and any other mortises, lock mortises, escutcheons, anything like that. A rather unknown use of a router plane is cleaning up the cheeks of the tenon. It is common for the tenon to be a bit oversized for the mortise and cleaning this down, especially if you want to keep it centered on the rail, is a bit of a task and, and you can use what's called a shoulder rabbit plane for this job. But if you want to keep it centered, and it's a rather large one with a long tenon and wide, this scheme works a little better. I've got the triangular cutter in there again. In fact, I'm going to pull this out of here because it really isn't doing much and you'll see a little better. There, I'm just cutting. You can see that while I followed the line pretty good, I'm a little off and I'm removing more back in here than I am here. up a little bit and now I'll put this over and by having this scrap that's the same thickness as this keeps the plane level to the tenon no matter where I am here. So, another use for the router plane, squaring up and making these perfectly in plane with the face of the rail. Well, there we've looked at just some of the things you can do with a router plane. It is a rather handy piece of equipment to have around your shop and will often do some jobs faster than a router. I like it because you lay out and then cut over the layout where with router tables you have to flip it over and have some kind of guide to guide all this and that can be a little uh, niggling at times. But we looked at how to cut grooves, especially stopped grooves if we wanted to stop them shy of the end, and dados. And in this case, we did a stopped dado, stopping it at the groove. We did a groove for a veneer string inlay. We routed out the field of this hinge mortise so that the hinge fits down to the perfect depth and the uh, field down there is not cocked one way or the other. And finally, we cleaned up the shoulders of this tenon by using a scrap lock and at the router plane between the two. I uh, appreciate your visiting my shop and I look forward to your next visit. Give router planes a try.